This video is brought to you by Brilliant. More about them in a bit. Only one man understood me and even he didn't understand me. These were Hegel's last words, and they really truly represent the totality of his thought. Hegel as a philosopher has an incredibly robust reputation for being obscure, but this needn't be the case. In this video, I'm going to take you through the key ideas of Hegelian philosophy. I'll give you a brief overview of the philosopher and tell you how to begin your philosophical journey with Hegel. So who was Hegel? Hegel was a German philosopher born in the Holy Roman Empire and dying in the Kingdom of Prussia. He saw a great deal of events during his lifetime, including the French Revolution and the Reign of Terror, the rise of Napoleon and the Napoleonic Wars, and the Industrial Revolution in England. He was born at a time which was the end of the Enlightenment and the beginning of the Romantic Era. His philosophy truly reflects this transitional period and the act of transition between eras within all society. It took him many years to gain philosophical influence within society, but towards the end of his life he became head of the University of Berlin and was renowned for his philosophy. Hegel's influence cannot be understated. Hegel influenced figures such as Kierkegaard, Marx, Heidegger and Gadamer. However, with such fame comes infamy. Hegel is infamously obscure and very difficult to comprehend, and was famously criticised by none other than Arthur Schopenhauer, the pessimist philosopher who believed that Hegel was incomprehensible nonsense. The truth is, Hegel is not incomprehensible nonsense, but is difficult to read, especially for a beginner. So the first thing you need to do is understand the basis of Hegelian thought and where to start with his works. But first, a word from our sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant.org is the best new way to learn maths and computer science interactively. Brilliant has thousands of lessons from foundational to advanced maths, AI, data science, neural networks and more and new lessons are added monthly. My favourite course is on logic and deduction. Brilliant's gamified structure makes logic puzzles really fun and engaging. It helps with critical reasoning and can even help you learn syllogistic reasoning and propositional logic. One of the advantages I've found is that it offers an explanation if you don't understand why you are getting the question wrong, so that means you can learn even when you're incorrect. Logical skills are part of a well-rounded individual and can really aid you in avoiding propaganda and honing your critical thinking skills so that you can find truth the fastest way possible. So to try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash perspective philosophy or click the link in the description and the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Where to begin? Not the phenomenology of spirit. Although considered his magnum opus, it is not his magnum opus and was actually his first major work. Hegel wrote the phenomenology of spirit when he was out of money and desperately trying to pay for his illegitimate child Ludwig. During this time, Hegel was facing extreme pressure and the book I think reflects the pressure that he was under. No doubt it is an amazing piece of work but the work reflects a younger man who hadn't fully developed his thought and Hegel did not really develop his writing style until later in his life. If you are going to begin with Hegel, I would first recommend checking out some reader's guides. The most basic reader's guide I would recommend is Singer's very short introduction to Hegel. It is a very brief overview of Hegel and often in its brevity leads to some falsities but will get you started. The next is maybe Norman's introduction to the phenomenology and David Rose's reader's guide to the philosophy of right. In terms of Hegel's primary works, I would recommend beginning not with the phenomenology but rather the encyclopedia. The encyclopedias were written directly for students. They are not written for academics which these other works were written towards. So this really means that Hegel is going out of his way to make his thoughts comprehensible. That being said, it is still very difficult and a very high level thought, so I do not recommend engaging with Hegel at all until you've read some philosophy. Do not start your philosophical journey with Hegel, you will probably want to claw your eyes out and never return to philosophy again. Read the science of logic in the encyclopedia first because that will give you the basis of Hegelian thought. The next is the philosophy of nature, which is akin to a philosophy of physics or a philosophy of natural science, in which he explains natural identities and how they form. It is important for Hegel's work, but not the most important for a beginner to understand, and so I would recommend maybe briefly going over the philosophy of nature and instead focus on getting to the philosophy of mind, which really does a good job at emphasizing the basis of the Hegelian system, which is spirit. 
I would say that the magnum opus for Hegel is either The Philosophy of Right, which was his last major work, or The Greater Logic, The Science of Logic, which is an amazing piece of work, but is written towards academics and includes a lot more than The Science of Logic or The Lesser Logic in the encyclopedia. And so don't go to that first, go to the encyclopedia. It is also worth mentioning that Hegel updated the encyclopedia before his death in the last 10 years when he didn't produce any major works. So if you are looking in many ways for the most up-to-date version of Hegel's thought, it's going to be in the lesser logic anyway, and it is written far better. After those works, I would recommend The Phenomenology and The Philosophy of History. The Phenomenology is a brilliant work. It is and it does culminate Hegel's thought, but it was the beginning of Hegel's career, not the end. Last but not least, I would certainly recommend checking out Hegel's lectures on the philosophy of history, which really showed the development of the Hegelian idea that the state is spirit to the point of world spirit, to the point of absolute spirit as moving through time and not simply as a single instance of time. You don't need to read that first of all, and I would certainly go through the list and focus on the more central texts first of all. The key ideas to take away from Hegel. Hegel describes reason as spirit when the certainty of all reality has been raised as truth. Now, that might sound complicated, but it's actually really not. What he's saying is that reason, as that our capacity to rationalize, once it knows itself as all being or all truth, it knows itself as spirit. Spirit is the essence of existence, if you will. You see, Hegel believed that consciousness was the only thing that truly exists. Now, what did he mean by that? Hegel was coming off the back of this Kantian revolution in philosophy, in which Kant had demonstrated without a shadow of a doubt that the world could could not be described via empiricism, and that materialism could not give an adequate account of reality. So Hegel is writing at a point in which mind's relationship to reality was cemented. The only way in which we can truly know reality was to apply categories, logical categories, which explained certain aspects of reality, such as space and time. These are Newtonian categories, scientific categories, from which Kant was defending. Hegel, unlike Kant, argued that these categories were not subjectively dependent, existing only in our minds, and instead existed in reality in itself. So space and time exist within an objective world. And Hegel agreed with the Aristotelian account that matter doesn't exist in itself, that there is no such thing as prime matter. Instead, matter is only that which holds a form, a concept, an idea. These ideas exist and we perceive them as concrete realities and that is what we term material. And so we don't need to think of the world as material, but instead as idea. And this is what is called objective idealism. Hegel takes this point and argues that reality is fundamentally the self, building upon what he described as that absolute commandment given by the oracle of Delphi to Socrates, know thyself. He argued that the truth of the self was the truth of reality in and of itself, meaning the absolute truth. But this absolute truth was not a subjectivity, but an objective subject. This means that there was an objective idea external to the agent. This objective idea, which includes the agent, is the divine idea. It's the idea in the mind of God. And this means that we are really, fundamentally, spirit. Think of this like the Holy Spirit, that which connects all things, the Father and the Son together, okay? So Hegel is really arguing that what is the basis of all reality is consciousness coming to know itself, and this is spirit. It is instantiated in every single point in history and is slowly becoming. And so Hegel argued that the unified reality that we exist in is a thing thinking of itself for all of eternity, and this is God. Logic, or Logos, the science of logic embarks to explain the development of identity in relation to itself, meaning that logic is the ontological, meaning the being which exists in reality. So it is not some sort of external concept such as matter or mat like some material or physical objects that exist. It is logic which gives those objects their meaning. And so what is underpinning everything is logical mechanism. And so we have the development 
of a process or a mechanistic explanation of reality. This procedural development of reality, Hegel attributes to Heraclitus, a pre-Socratic philosopher who argued that Logos was all that could truly be known, that which can describe the movement of being and non-being, a transitional phase between particulars. However, Hegel, like Plato and Aristotle, seen this as a single unified being, and he attributed this to the Trinity, the Christian God. And so Hegel argues that this procedural development can be explained through a Trinitarian account of reality, which Aristotle first described as the three figures of logic. This for Hegel leads to an absolute syllogism, which logically contains anything in its universality, its particularity, and in the synthesis between them, their individuality. These form three logical interconnecting parts which logically sustain themselves. And this can give you an explanation of an object in its universality, its species, its essence, its particularity, its concrete existence, and its individuality, its mediated concrete existence, which is a limited universal. This means for Hegel that truth is the bedrock of creation. So what we are witnessing is an already completed whole completing itself. So we are logically moving from paradigm to paradigm through thought. And this thought is developing through history with the contents of our thinking. And that does not just mean for Hegel the reflective thinking that we engage in, but rather that our very perceptions are developing. Right over good. The distinction between rightness and goodness, or ethics and morality, was first coined by Hegel. Hegel argues that we can separate that which is subjectively moral, the good, and that which is objectively moral, the right, and that one has an epistemological and so ontological basis in Hegel, where the other is merely speculative. It relies upon the reasoning of a single individual which has not yet been reviewed by their peers. And so this separates what is an individual's moral inclination nations rather than something like lawfulness. Right in the German which Hegel is speaking of is legal rights. Hegel argues that we go from a single individual seeking a moral goal to a collective individual understanding their goal to be united with the goal of others within a lawful society. And so we gain an objective ethical system. And this system represents a system of drives. Drives from which people are trying to satisfy their needs, but also express what they believe to be justice within society. And so what happens is that various institutions form and mediate this conception of right. This progresses through history to lead to a more developed state to the point in which you can establish laws and the better the laws, the better the state. Very similar to Aristotle. Hegel also saw the importance of private property and of a well-functioning justice system. He thought that the mediation between civil authority and private interests were the basis of the state, the individual who's trying to get what he wants and trying to maintain a good life for him and his family, whilst expecting just treatment from his peers and wanting to give just treatment to his peers, ultimately leads to a well-formed society. And so this is a mediation between institutions which all have their own logical ends yet in their unity form human life and this is the same as in aristotle the human good contains both the good of medicine and the good of war but they contradict each other except when taken together in the life of an individual who is trying to live a peaceful harmonious life this leads hegel to be against poverty he promotes corporations but believes corporations should exist in a kind of family-like manner in which individuals are able to achieve their ends and able to express themselves and also leads him to reject the developing capitalism in England. He wasn't against capitalism, capitalism hadn't fully formed yet, but he was against putting other corporations out of business as the goal of another corporation because you should care about those individuals who you are putting out of work. And he thought this was barbaric. Likewise, Hegel was also against tyranny. Dialectic. Hegel was very fond of history. In fact, the basis of Hegelian thought can really be shown to be classical. Hegel loved the classical era and argued that everything within Western civilization began in ancient Greece and that this developed over time through what he calls the dialectic. The dialectic or the lord and bondsman relationship is the ethical basis in which society and philosophy develop. This is 
the development of the self. If I have a conception of self and you have a conception of self, Hegel shows this to be a conception of our desires to express and actualize ourselves. So it's not that I know what I am, it's that I want to be something. And so these desires often come into conflict. The mediation of this conflict is how we produce an objective conception of self through what is known as mutual recognition. I recognize that you are an individual with your own freedom and capable of making your choices and you recognize that I am an individual capable of making my choices and so we rely upon each other's judgment in relation to ourselves and an objective world from which we cannot know independently. I require your insight and you require mine. However, this often begins as a one-sided relationship where an individual establishes a moral order in order to achieve their ends over others. This is then mediated through history, through individuals fighting against this tyranny. And this is what Hegel described as the Lord and Bondsman relationship, in which the work of the bondsman is what progresses history. This is why Hegel argued that the slave enslaves themselves, which may sound horrific, but what Hegel was really saying is that a slave mentality is something which is self-imposed, and that once rejected, you are no longer a slave. You are actively fighting against slavery, and so could not be adequately described as a slave. So an identity can only be true if it's fully actualized within the individual and in their actions once they internalize it. So ethics and politics are the epistemological engine of history moving us forward through time. So history becomes progressive. We become better and better and we are knowing ourselves more and more. The absolute the absolute was first coined by Schelling, who was a close friend of Hegel. Hegel takes this and develops what he calls absolute spirit. Spirit, as you remember from the beginning, is this essence of existence, this conscious being coming to know itself. Absolute spirit absolutely knows itself as this consciousness, as the basis of all truth and all reality, and so it is God. But this spirit is present throughout all of this development. Its substance is instantiated in every particular event moving through history until it culminates in itself. And so all of history, religion and philosophy is God remembering himself. Which is why Hegel's last words were, only one man understood me and even he didn't understand me. And if you would like to see more on Hegel, I have four lectures on Hegel in my course, An Introduction to Western Philosophy, which you can find in the link below. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and as always, try to gain some perspective.